please mute yourself during the, the lecture. Um, and with that, um, I guess we're very happy to have Rose Morris Wright here for a third lecture on Hartman Groups. So take it away, Rose. All right, thank you. Thank you all for being here and sticking with me through, through the end. Um, I'm excited about today's lecture, so hopefully it's interesting to you guys as well. So my goal uh, for today is to talk a little bit more about, about geometric techniques for studying art and groups. Uh, we are, after all, all geometric group theorists, so this is really what we're interested in, right? Um, and on uh, whatever day that was, uh, Tuesday, I, so I, I started talking about um, like the Gar side structure and some of the algebraic things that you can do uh, with art and groups. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we saw was that it really only worked, you know, there are many things algebraically that really only work for finite type art and groups. And so when you want to go beyond that to more, more general, even if I'm not talking about all art and groups, even if I'm just talking about FC type or, you know, some larger collection of art and groups, um, really geometry is the way to go. And so I'm, I'm just going to talk about a few different uh, options for, for geometric techniques. Um, and the main one that I want to talk about is, is the Deline complex, um, uh, which is used to study FC type art and groups. Um, and then um, hopefully at the end, we'll have some time to talk about some, some ways that you can, uh, um, you know, variations on this that you can use to study, even, go, go even more broad than, than FC type. But this is, this is mostly for, for FC type stuff. Uh, and this this complex. Um, so originally, uh, there was there was a complex that was defined by by Deline um, in like the 1970s, um, and he was really just working with with uh, finite type art groups. Um, and then um, uh, what we now call the Deline complex is a modified version of that, which, which is modified for for infinite type. So this is by um, uh, Charney and Davis in 1995. Um, so, but just so you, so you know, like if, if you go back and read this paper, what I'm calling the Deline complex in this paper, they call it the modified Deline complex. And then there's a separate thing that they have that's the Deline complex. But everyone now just calls this the Deline complex. This is the, the what, we, what we now call it. So let's define this, this thing. Uh, so script S uh, to the F, uh, it's going to be a, a set of subsets of my generating set of my group. Uh, and they're subsets such that um, the group generated by that subset is finite type. That's what the F is for. F is for finite type. Um, and I just want you to uh, note um, uh, by, by, by I, you know, this is Part of the you know technically this satisfies the definition, but uh, it's not always obvious. Uh, this includes the the t equals equals the empty set set, uh, and and then a empty set here is just going to be the trivial group, right? It's it's the group with with no generators. All right, and then uh, the how do I do the Deline complex? So the Deline complex is going to be a cat zero cube complex. Um, so uh, yeah, this here, we're, we're defining the Deline complex um, associated to an Arden group A gamma, and you can you can define this for any Arden group. So this is you can define it for any Arden group, and then it'll be cat zero only in specific cases. But um, so associated to A gamma um, is a cube complex, um, and I'm gonna. Uh, denote it by d gamma, and it's defined as follows. So the vertices uh, correspond to cosets of um, of these special subgroups. So cosets of the form G A T. Uh, so, so G here is just any any group element we like. And then T is going to be in my special set of, of things that generate finite type things. So these are these are the, the cosets, and then I have to tell you how to make a, a cube. So uh, G A sub T and H A 
sub r, a uh, span, uh, a cube, uh, a, a k cube, a cube of dimension k. Um, if they uh, one of them is is included in inside the other, at, you know, as as cosets, right? These are just collections of elements, and I can think about uh, it's it's one of them inside the other. Um, and then the the dimension of the cube is determined by um, by the the order of this of this set t minus r. Um, and then when whenever this happens, so uh, when this happens, so so here you know because these are cosets, right? G and H here might like like if this is a if this is a coset, I'm I I might write it in, you know using G A T or I might use it using a, a different group element, right? There's there's different uh, group elements that you can use to represent different cosets. So when this happens, you always get um, G G A T equals H A T, right? I I can always this this inclusion implies that this element H here is inside this coset, so I can use this H as my representative element for that coset as well. And you can, um, so let's do it. This is this is kind of complicated when you first see it. So I'm gonna do it, spend a, a bit of time just like drawing a big example. Uh, so my, my example here, uh, my gamma is gonna look like this. It's just gonna be two edges, uh, one labeled three and one labeled two. And we should give these some, maybe this is R, S, T. Uh, and so what is my my SF here, right? So my set of, of subsets of generators that generate finite type things, I should get the empty set. Um, I should get all, all the sets that are just singletons. Um, the set that's just T. And then I should get the set um, RS and the set uh, ST. Um, and so, using using uh, the the subgroups that are generated by this by these sets, we can build uh, what like the fundamental domain of this complex. So here's my uh, fundamental domain. Um, it, it will look like this. I'm going to have uh, one cube. Maybe here's um, here's a empty set, right? So that's the trivial group. Um, and a empty set is contained inside um, a that's just generated. I'm going to stop writing all of my little brackets. So this is this is the set generated by s. Uh, this is the set generated by r. Over here, I'm going to have the set generated by t. And then this will be the set generated by r and s. And this will be the set generated by, or, I'm sorry, the subgroup uh, generated by S and T, all right. So, so this is like my fundamental domain, right? And and these are just subgroups, right? Or or you can think about them like there's these are the identity copies of my sub of my cosets, and then I'm going to tr translate them all around, and and glue those together, and we'll get. Um, so here's here's my cube complex, or that you know this is going to be a, a subset of. Of my cube complex, my my actual cube complex for this example is going to be, it's it's infinite diameter and it's also going to have um, vertices that are like inf have infinitely many edges coming out of them. So we we have no chance of drawing the whole thing, but we're going to draw a, a small piece of it. Um, so like maybe here's my fundamental domain, right? Here's a empty set. Maybe I'll zoom out a little bit so we can see that at the same time. Um, and right here, so here's AR, and then you know inside AR, this is this is R A empty set, right? Because AR is the same as R AR in terms of cosets. So I can like glue on an R copy of my fundamental domain, right? So like if this is F, this is R times F, and over here I'll get uh, T times F. And over here, I'll get S times F. I can start building this up. 
um, over here, I'll get um, st times f, right? Maybe um, maybe I should label some some more of these, uh, right? So this is uh, here's s a empty set right here, right? This is um, a s. There's a, there's um, all of, all of these are really two cubes, right? These are all fundamental domains. So then this this one should be s a t, and then over here I have s t a empty set, um, and right here I have uh, t. Right, so here's t a empty set. So this should be t a s. Um, so so I'm starting to um, just you know build build up this complex bigger and bigger um, and and I can see the fact that that T and S commute with each other right that I have I started with a, a, a two relation between them by by the fact that I can go S you know I, I can first do S and then T or I can do T and then S and I have this like little square right here and then if there you know there's a there's a, a braid relation between R and S so I should get um, I should get, you know, three things going around this way. So maybe let's draw that. Um, do I have three of them already? I should get three more. Um, so like this will be um, RSF. Um, something like this. Uh, this is SR times F and SRS equals RSR times F. Um, all right, so we've done like this is my you know sort of level level one, and then you can you can keep going, right? So like here, um, right? So so this vertex is R A empty set. This is R A R. So this one should be T A R. And now I have another, this should be um, TR times F, right? Here's uh, TR, a empty set down here. Um, right, so, so I, can, I can keep building in this direction. I should be able to keep building in this direction. I can keep building in this direction. I'm gonna like sort of make an, an infinitely branching thing coming off of this. Um, and then the other complicated thing that I haven't that I haven't really mentioned yet is that you know so here I have here I have a empty set here I have you know this one is T A empty set and then you know coming off of T A empty set I've got right I've got my 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 fundamental domain I've got T times my fundamental domain and then I should also get T squared and T cubed and so I'm actually going to have maybe I should do this in a different color. Right, so you know, coming off here, I'm I should get like infinitely many flaps, right? So this will be like t squared, t cubed, t the fourth. Uh, I should also get all the negative powers, right? So this is this is a very complicated, uh, um, but is this? Maybe maybe this is maybe I should pause. Are there questions about just like this picture and how I built it? All right, great. Um, okay. Uh, so let's think about now that now we have this complex. Let's think about like what are some of the nice properties of it, right? So maybe let's like observations. Um, so if a gamma is is not finite type, um, then this uh, this complex, uh, the Deline complex um, is infinite diameter. Uh, right, that's that's a, that's a, a good thing for us to have in terms of 
geometric group theory, we, we would really like to have like some, some uh, um, really long geodesics moving through this space that we can work with. Um, there are vertices um, with uh, infinitely many um, adjacent edges. Right, so so if I think about like the, the topology of this space, it's it's a little bit funky, um, right? Like I, like I can have um, you know, see you know in, in infinite sequences of points going, you know, going going around, and I can get kind of weird weird things that way, but that doesn't doesn't bother us too much. Uh, we also, you know, and as geometric group theorists, anytime we create a, a geometric space, we would really like our group to act on it, which we, it does. So that's great. Um, you know, it, 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 the, the action, um, the vertices are the cosets and every group acts on its own cosets. So, um, so that's great, right? I, I just have, uh, so G times my, I get a vertex will be GH times the GH copy of that of that coset, um, and this is this is this is an action by isometries, right? This um, this preserves my inclusion uh, relation, and the stabilizers. So the stabilizer of a vertex, um, let's call the vertex GAT. Um, is a uh, subgroup. It's uh, G, A, T, G inverse. Um, so those those parabolic subgroups that I was talking about in the in the second lecture are appearing right here as the stabilizers of these vertices. And this is one way that you can um, study these these subgroups. Um, and so maybe the the conclusion here. Right, all, all of this stuff uh, implies uh, that the action is uh, co-compact, um, but not uh, proper, right? Because I have very large, very large vertex stabilizers, but it is gonna be co-compact, right? We, we just saw that where I have, this is my, my fundamental domain and I'm just translating it all around. Um, all right. Um, okay. The, the other thing, uh, you know, so now we, we have, we have a, a group it's acting on the space. We want to know is this, does this space have any sort of hyperbolic conditions, right? So, um, D gamma is, uh, cat zero, um, with, with the usual, uh, cubicle metric. Right, so so I'm I'm assuming that all of my my cubes here are actual genuine interval cross interval cubes. Um, uh, if and only if a gamma is um, FC type, right? So maybe let's just remember. So this means um, all uh, clique uh, subgroups. Um, our, our finite type, right? So that tells me that anytime I see a clique in the graph, uh, the, the set of generators for that clique are going to um, give us a, a vertex in my, in my complex, right? Um, and this, the, the FC, you know, the, the, the F and the C here, so FC, um, stands for uh, flag complex, um, right? So, so, you know, when is a simplicial complex flag? It's, it, it's a simplicial complex is flag if all of the complete, uh, you know, one skeletons are, are filled in with n, n simplices, right? So like if I, here's my graph gamma, right? Maybe I've got, you know, something like this. Maybe I have some, uh, complicated cliques here, right? And, and the idea here is if, if the labels on this triangle are such that 
um, this is going to be a, a finite type, right? Then I'll be I'll be FC, and um, if I'm if I'm looking at this this defining graph as a simplicial complex, I'm going to I'm going to color in all the one all the simplices that correspond to the finite type ones. Um, and uh, I think I put this in the in the exercises. Um, there are there are some vertices in the Deline complex where the the link or the at least the one skeleton of the link looks exactly like this graph. Um, and so if you're if you're not FC type, you're never going to satisfy this um, this flag flag condition. Um, um, to, let's see, somewhere later in my notes, I actually have a picture of this. Yeah, I should draw this now. Um, right, so like, uh, let's do, do a non-example here, right? So I like to say I have, this is, this is a, maybe a, a, a sub part of my, of my graph and I'm, I'm drawing my Deline complex. Here's a empty set. Right, maybe here's A R, A S, A T, um, and I'm going to get all three of these uh, squares, right? Because each of these edges is is finite type, but the whole triangle itself is not finite type. So I don't have a, I don't have a um, anything to fill in this this three cube, right? So this three cube. It's not filled in uh, because RST um, is not in this SF set. Um, so if my if my um, group is not um, FC type, then this I, I have no chance of being um, cat zero in the in this um, with this metric. But you always are if if you're if you are FC type, and this is exactly why FC type is an interesting thing to study. Um, so uh, one, um, why, why, what, what do we get out of this Deline complex? Um, let's do some like, uh, let's call this results maybe. Um, so th this is all still from, from that, um, Charney and Davis paper in, in 1995. Um, uh, so uh, this Deline complex is um, a homotopy equivalent um, to the universal cover of the hyperplane complement. Uh, I can spell. There we go. Right. So, so remember, if you go go all the way back to um, that very first lecture when I talked about how, given a Coxeter group, the Coxeter group will act by reflections on this vector space, and then I can take all of the hyperplanes out, and I get this space called the hyperplane complement. Right. And and the Artin group is the the fundamental group of this of this hyperplane complement. Well, if I take the, the universal cover of this, um, I get something that's homotopy equivalent to the Deline complex. So showing that this hyperplane complement is, is a classifying space, that was the K pi one conjecture, that was a, one of our big questions, right? So um, K pi one conjecture um, now becomes equivalent to showing that uh, D gamma is contractible. Right, because if if DM is contractible, um, then um, it's um, it's higher the the higher homotopy of of the homotopy groups of this um, quotient space will will all be trivial and and everything works. Out. Right, so this this is is how you prove the K by one conjecture um, for FC type Barton groups. Um, there. And there has been some, some work like, okay, so, so 
this, you know, this the homotopy equivalence part, um, right? So, so this part uh, works for all Artin groups, uh, right? So, so this this equivalence is is now true for, for all Artin groups. Um, but you know, when the question now is when is this space a, a contractible space? Um, and if it's if it's cat zero, cat zero spaces are contractible. That's that comes out immediately. Um, so so then the question is like, are there other ways to prove? Okay, so maybe um, so. A question um, outside of this FC type case. Um, are there are there other ways to show that d gamma is contractible? Um, and there's there's been been some success with this. Uh, so one one way to do this is is to put a you know a different metric on it. Um, it's the, the, the specific, specifically the, the most successful one has been, it's called the, the Musong metric. Um, and so when I, when I put this, this Musong metric on, on this um, space, right, I, I, I have this, this cube complex and I'm, then I'm, I forget that all the things are actually, you know, square cubes. Um, and I just, um, so how, how does this metric work? Um, like I, I start with, all of these squares, right? And they're perfectly right angles, right? So this is like my cubicle metric. Um, maybe like here's a empty set and here's a ST. That's just, we'll just do one little two dimensional one. Um, and then in, in the Musong metric, um, you just, uh, shift all of the, you know, you, you change them all into parallelograms, right? So here I still have a empty set, here I still have a ST. And at this angle right here, I want this angle to be um, pi divided by uh, at the label on the, on the edge between S and T. And what does this do? Yeah, let's, let's go back here up to here to our picture of the Deline complex. So here I am in this picture, and in in my cubicle Deline complex, right? Like if I if I looked at this this vertex here, right? This is like A R S. This vertex is like it um, has um, has way more than than um, two pi around it, right? I've got ninety degrees six times. But if I if I shrink all of these angles. Uh, by by the right amount, then I'm I'm effectively flattening everything at this at this vertex. So that's what the Musong metric does. Um, and you lose some things, right? You lose all of the combinatorial stuff that you get from cubicle complexes, right? When I'm when I'm do that do this, I don't have hyperplanes anymore. I don't have any of that stuff. Um, but but now I have. Um, so um, so it uh, we know so um, d gamma. Uh, with the Musong metric um, is a cat zero space. So it's not a cat zero cubicle metric, but it but it's it's still a cat zero space. Um, when a gamma is what's called a, a two-dimensional um, Artin group. Um, and so two-dimensional Arden groups, it, 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 I'm basically requiring that the Deline complex be a, a two-dimensional complex. That's where that comes from, right? So, um, so I'm, I'm requiring, um, uh, let's just write, write down a definition here. Um, so uh, 2D Arden groups. Um, our groups, um, where all um, T in this SF set are um, order less than or equal to two. Um, so, um, so for example, this this 
333 group right here. This is an example of, of a two dimensional group, right? Um, like all, all, all the triangles have to be infinite type, basically. Um, and so this, um, right, uh, so this implies um, now I have k by one conjecture um, is true for, for 2D yard groups. Um, and in, in, in fact, there it's, it's conjectured that this Muzong metric is, is cat zero for, for all art groups. It's just really hard to show that, uh, you know, something is, is cat zero when you don't have combinatorial structures anymore. Um, but, um, but this, this is one potential avenue for, for answering a lot of these questions. Um, let's see, that might be a good question stopping point. All right. Uh, okay. Let's let's keep going then. Um, I I also want to talk about. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about other other variations on this on this complex. Um, so there, the, you know, there there are other geometric spaces that people use to study art groups, um, and and the vast majority of them are just variations of this. Um, so um, you know, one one example um, is so like sort sort of the the idea here is um, you know d gamma is is missing some vertices that. Um, Make d gamma, you know, not cat zero. Um, in in our in our non FC type case, uh, right? That 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 was this picture that I was drawing earlier. Right, this this picture, right, where we, we saw, um, if I if I look at this this vertex here, and I think about like the link of this vertex, um, this is this is not cat zero, right? But but if I just like cone this off and I add, you know, RST to my list of possible generating sets for my cosets, then everything is great, right? Um, so this is uh, um, something that um, that uh, Ruth Cherney and I did. This is part of my PSG thesis. So um, uh, Charney and myself uh, in, I think this was like 2019 maybe. Um, so we uh, define what we call the clique cube complex. Um, which I'm going to denote C gamma. Uh, and it's basically the exact same definition, except instead of only restricting to these finite type uh, generating sets, I'm going to allow more of them. Right, so, um, so the definition is the same as before. Uh, but I'm gonna uh, replace this set SF uh, with a new set, uh, which we call S. Uh, you know, this is this is supposed to be like a, a little clique, right? S S delta, uh, which is so this is equal to the set of T subset of S, uh, such that T. Uh, a clique in my graph gamma. Or I, again, I have to include is the empty set as, as an okay thing. So if my art group is FC type, then um, then I get the exact same thing as I did before, right? S, S, F will be equal. F, the FC type art groups are exactly the ones where these two sets are equal to each other. Um, Uh, uh, then my clique cube complex will be equal to the Deline complex. Um, if uh, gamma is itself a clique, 
um, then C gamma is finite diameter. Right, so so that's that's sad because we've already talked about how like the the clique groups are the, are actually the most mysterious ones, and it would be really great if we just had some information about those, um, and we don't. But um, if um, if if the the diameter, oh, here, what should I say? If if the diameter of this graph gamma is is larger, then I am going to get an infinite diameter space. Um, and that'll be um, really interesting. And it actually turns out this uh, clique cube complex um, is at zero um, for all possible R groups, right? So, um, so this gives us um, a lot of, um, you know, it, it's it's not giving us tools to study, you know, the, this clique case, which is sort of the most mysterious case, but it is giving us lots of Lots of tools. Um, so, one thing that I think makes um, both the Deline complex and the Clique cube complex really useful is their their ways of taking results about the the groups on that are the stabilizers of the vertices, right? So, if in the Deline complex, like if I have a result about all finite type groups or in the clique cube complex, if I have a result about all uh, groups that are generated by a clique, then I can use this, these complexes to um, get a more, a more general result about any, um, any Arden group where my whole space is gonna be cat zero. So um, maybe I'll write that down, right? So uh, general pattern, this is like a general pattern of, of lots of results. Um, so if uh, we know a result is true um, about finite type um, or or I'm going to call them you know clique type, you know um, groups where the where the defining graph is 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 a complete graph. Um, then uh, we can use either the Deline complex or um, or the clique cube complex um, to get uh, results about um, groups where this complex is cat zero, right? So either FC type. Or you know, uh, you know, respectively, all our groups. So this is this is I think um, one of one of the big patterns that's going on with a lot of results. Uh, and let's see, oh, we have twenty minutes left. Good. So um, so my plan for the rest, I I am going to deviate from my. I'm just giving you lists and lists of questions. Uh, I thought I, I should do at least one honest to goodness proof in my three hour mini course. So, um, so I'm going to do some examples of some arguments like this. So here's uh, example number one, uh, and then I have two examples. We'll see, how, see if we get through both of them. Uh, all right, so um, uh, maybe we'll call this a theorem. Um, if all um, clique type Arten groups are torsion free, right? So if they have no torsion elements, remember this is this is one of our open questions. We would really really like to know which which are you know, or we conjecture that all Arten groups are torsion free, and we know that a lot of them are, but we don't. Um, this, this particular, you know, we don't necessarily know, know about these guys, but if this was true, um, then all Arden groups are torsion free. So how, do, how does this work? So proof, um, 
So I'm going to start with, with G in my Arden group. Uh, and G acts on my uh, clique cube complex. And, and this, this guy is, is cat zero, right? And anytime I have an action on a clique cube complex, um, right? So, th so this is either um, what we call elliptical, right? Which means there exists a fixed point. Um, or uh, what's called loxodromic. Right, so, so loxodromic actions are, um, uh, they, they have, have what's called an axis, right? And you have this, this line and you have X and then here you have like G times X and then here you have G squared times X. And you know, here's G to the N times X. Here's G inverse times X. Right, so loxodromic things act almost like translation where I'm, um, and this this is like one of the properties of of cat zero actions, is that um, they have either elliptical or loxodromical um, actions, right? And so then if G um, is is a torsion element, right? So i.e. if if G to the k equals the identity for some k. Um, then G uh, is not going to be a loxodromic. So G has to be elliptical and it has to fix a point, right? So this implies there exists some X such that G times X equals X. X is a, a point in my, in my complex. Um, and then, okay, so if, if uh, if X is in the interior of a cube, then um, then G actually fixes um, point wise um, the, the entire cube. And this just comes from the, the way that, that um, elements act on, on cubes inside my, in my, inside my, either the Deline complex or the Clique cube complex, right? Like maybe here I have a empty set, right here I have a s, here I have a t, here I have a s t. This is just an example. It could be a higher dimensional thing, right? Here's x, right? And if, if g fixes x, um, then you know, G also can't permute these vertices of, of the cube because G is going to send you know, an, an S type of vertex to an S type of vertex and, a, and an ST type of vertex to an ST type vertex. So, so if it fixes this, this point in the middle, then it's going to fix, fix my whole cube. Right, so uh, G can't permute uh, the vertices of a cube. Right, so so now if I know that G acts elliptically, right? Um, G um, is in uh, the stabilizer of some vertex. Uh, maybe my vertex. Let's call my vertex H A sub T. Right, and then I get so now I get that G is in H A T H inverse. That's what the stabilizer of a vertex looks like. Um, and this implies that uh, H inverse G H um, is in A sub T, and this is now a torsion element inside one of my my vertex groups, right? Which is, and I know that that T spans spans a clique because I'm in my clique cube complex, right? So so the idea here is I I started with a torsion element for my whole group, and I've Used the clique cube complex to produce a torsion element inside one of these little subgroups. So I'm I'm reducing this is there a torsion element question down to just are there torsion elements in these little subgroups. Um, so this is a you know this is pretty pretty uh, simple example, but uh, this is this is sort of the kind of thing that you end up doing a lot with these complexes is trying to um, have some some question where I'm 
I have you know, an element of my group that satisfies some property and I wanna use this, the geometry of this complex to show that that um, element has to be inside one of these little subgroups. And then I, I conclude from there. Um, here, let's do, here's example two of this kind of argument. Um, all right, so here, uh, suppose P and Q are parabolic subgroups. of an FC type Artin group. So the last one we use the clique complex, this one we're gonna use the Deline complex. Um, so our, our conclusion, uh, if, if we, I have two parabolic subgroups in an FC type, oh, I want, I want P and Q, sorry, I, I need them to be finite type as well, right? I want these, P and Q to be stabilizers of vertices in my Deline complex. Uh, then uh, P intersect Q um, is also parabolic. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna prove this, uh, you know, with so assume uh, P intersect Q is parabolic. Um, if um, a gamma is finite type. Um, so this is a result, I was talking about this on whatever day that was, Tuesday. Uh, this is by Completo, uh, Gonzalez Manessis, uh, Gebhardt, and Wiest. Um, I think this was also 2019. So, so we're doing a similar, the idea is we're doing a similar pattern, right? We're saying, we know this true, this fact, you know, parabolic subgroups, intersection of parabolic subgroups is parabolic. We know this fact is true if our overarching group is finite type. Let's use the Deline complex to show that it's true if the overarching group is FC type. All right, so here's proof. Um, so uh, P and Q are uh, finite type parabolics. So, so there exist vertices in my Deline complex. So there exists, I'm gonna call them VP and VQ. Um, vertices in D gamma that are fixed by P and Q. Most, most parabolic subgroups are gonna have many, many possible vertices. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which ones we pick here. All right, and then um, if my element G is in P intersect Q, um, then G uh, fixes uh, pointwise. Um, the geodesic um, in my in my space between these two vertices between VP and VQ, right? So, like, here's here's my picture. Here's VP. Here's VQ, right? And and this is this is coming from so so the cat zero ness of I should I should write this down, right? So so uh, d gamma being cat zero implies that there's there's only one geodesic, right? That's that's what's happening here, right? And then I have this this geodesic. Here's this gamma guy, right? And and um, if my, if my element G is inside both P and Q, then it'll fix this endpoint and it'll fix this endpoint, so it has to fix my whole geodesic. Um, all right, so but it so I, I'm talking about this geodesic. This like this isn't an edge path. This is like just just a, a line. It might go through the middle of some cubes. Right, maybe let's draw some cubes here. 
here's some, some cubes. Um, I didn't do a good job of making, making them end on a vertex, but that's okay. Right, so, so first, first I have that G fixes this red line. Um, and now, you know, again, using this idea that no single um, element of my, of my group can permute the vertices inside a cube, right? So now if I say G, G fixes this little point X inside the interior of my cube, it'll fix my whole, whole cube, right? So this implies that G fixes uh, a geodesic um, edge path, right? Like, like a, a combinatorial geodesic, these are sometimes called, um, between VP and VQ. Right, maybe I should draw draw this this path. Right, so this this path will look something like this. It'll be one of one of these little edge guys. All right. Uh, and now, what do I want to do? I'm going to um, I'm going to divide this edge path. Or, or maybe maybe partition is a, is a better word. I can partition this edge path um, into segments. Um, so it's it might, I'm going to draw it like this. I have here. I have VP. Um, let's let's have this V VP up here to I'm going to call this VP one right. So P one is the stabilizer of VP one. P one is a parabolic subgroup. Here will be VP2, right? I'm going to keep going. Here's v, um, VPN minus one down here to VQ. And I'm drawing it in this up and down, up and down way. I'm going to actually write down what I mean here, right? So IE, uh, I, want, I want P equals P0, Q equals PN, uh, PI equals the stabilizer of V sub sub PI. And then I'm I want it there to be this alternating pattern. So I want either PI to be a subset of PI plus one or PI plus one to be a subset of PI uh, in this sort of alternating fashion. Um, and you can always do this, right? Because uh, the the edges in my Deline complex are determined by um, inclusion on the on the cosets that determine these vertices, right? So, and if I have one coset inside another, then their their um, corresponding conjugate subgroups are going to be having have inclusion, and so you, you can you can always do this kind of thing. So now I have this alternating path that my my group element fixes. Um, and what do I do? I'm going to uh, proceed by induction on on the, the the length, the number of segments in this path. Um, so uh, my base case, if I have if I have n equals one, right? Then I have here's VP or VQ, and here's here's VP, right? So if n equals one, then either either P is a subset of Q or Q is a subset of P. And I know exactly what their intersection looks like. Right, P intersect Q is definitely gonna be parabolic. That one's easy. All right. Um, so, uh, so then by induction, I'm going to Assume that P intersect uh, P n minus one uh, is is a parabolic, um, and I know that this whole path is is fixed by by G, right? So um, that tells me that uh, P intersect Q uh, is is a subset of um, this P n minus one, right? Because all um, all elements G inside P intersect Q uh, fix 
uh, they fixed the entire path, and so they they have to fix this vertex on this path. Um, right. So this tells me that p intersect q intersect uh, p n minus one is equal to uh, p intersect q. Um, and then uh, then you you divide into cases. So I have. Um, case one, case one is the case where um, the, the end of my path looks like this. So I have PN minus one, and then up, up here, I have Q, right? And I, I have, or at the, these are vertices, right? But I, I have a, my, my inclusion is in this direction. Um, and then case two is, is in the other direction. And um, let's see, I, I should probably st stop talking at this point. Um, but, uh, Right, so there's there's case one, there's case two. I should draw these. Here's VP. Right, so I, I did a bunch of things. Here's VP. Did a bunch of things, and eventually I got here to V PN minus one down to VQ. And here in here in case two, this is where I have to use my assumption about. Um, this fact is true inside finite type things, right? So, so in, in this case, I have um, n minus one uh, is finite type. And um, both Q and um, P intersect n minus one are uh, subgroups of, um, Pn minus one, right? And they're parab parabolic subgroups. Um, so by uh, by the fact that we're using about um, finite type groups, I get that Q intersect with P intersect Pn minus one is parabolic, right? And that's exactly what I wanted to show because I have that those two groups are are equal, right? This is the one that I want. I want to show that this group is parabolic, right? Um, this, this fact, this is, let's call this uh, Cubito et al. Um, right, so, um, and this, this maybe I'll leave, leave case one as an exercise. It's, it's very, you know, once, once you have this, this inclusion, um, you, it's it's not hard. Um, so so, but the, you know this is this is the idea of, of bit, lots and lots of proofs. Um, is you have the Deline complex or the clique cube complex or some hyperbolic like space that the that um, your R group is acting on, and you uh, have some element of your group that you want to know something about, and you look at um, like the the a set of things that are stabilized by that element or some, some geodesic in your space. And you, you try and um, use your geometry to somehow get um, information now about just like one vertex and um, reduce it down to a question about just the group that's stabilizing just that one vertex. And then you now you're in finite type land and you can use all of those algebraic techniques that we were talking about. Um, so this is, you know, not, not, it's not like you can now do all proofs, but, uh, but this is, this is the main idea of a lot of, a lot of things. Uh, and I think 